Ministries, where our highest priority is making God real in your life. You can visit us online at womanatthewellministries.org. Now sit down with us as we look to the scriptures to learn more about God and to strengthen our daily walk with Jesus Christ. In this episode of the Woman at the Well Ministries podcast, join Pastor Kim Miller and Erica Close in a conversation as we walk with Jesus. In today's conversation, we share on the topic of gifts to unwrap all year long. In this conversation, we're talking about peace. Hello, and again, thank you for joining us. I'm Kim Miller alongside Erica Close. Hello, everybody. And we are so excited that the result of knowing Jesus is the ability to unwrap his gift of peace. He bestows it upon all of us, but we have to be willing to receive it, and we have to be willing to put our trust and faith in a God that cannot fail. And I am so grateful that I learned a long time ago who God is, and I love him for who he is, and I love him for who he makes me be when I am walking in the center of his will. And our verse today that I want to talk about or open up or get our minds completely um, founded upon, our foundation, is Romans 5.1. And it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, that is the most important relationship that you have to have in check, Erica. Mm -hmm. And the most important question you'll ever be asked in your life is what are you going to do with Jesus? Absolutely. You know, that puts people sometimes on the back of their heels. But the reality of it is how you answer that question determines how you spend eternity. And this tells us that I can have peace with God through my relationship with Jesus Christ when I have chosen to serve him and to accept his free gift of salvation And I do this through faith. And the Bible says that as we exercise our faith, it becomes increased. And when we are around people who speak of how God has worked in their lives, how God has blessed them, how God has intervened, when we hear and see God in other people, we also become increased in our faith. Because we know that what God did for someone else, he'll do for us because he's no respecter of persons. And so I love knowing that that my faith in Jesus is secure. And it secures me a position in a home not made with hands eternal into heavens. And what comes with that here in this world is the peace of God. Amen. Right? I mean, there's this, the gift of salvation is a security from now through eternity, and then with that comes so many things here in this world for the days that we live here. Amen. And and one of those, you know, is peace. And when we're thinking about what peace is, you know, there are a lot of different probably definitions of what peace is in our world. But I think that when we're talking about the gift of peace that we have in our hearts is that it's that, that assurance, right, that calm assurance that's in our hearts that regardless of whatever the situation, as long as we're in the correct relationship with God, and I really like that you said that was the one relationship you really had to make sure you had in check, right, that that was in the right place. It's that calm assurance that all is well, that in spite of the circumstances, because the circumstances are going to shift and the circumstances are going to change and circumstances are going to get noisy and rough and you know things are going to happen but regardless of the situation when we have peace we can sit and rest and believe 
you know, that all is well. Because through faith, we know that our environment and our circumstances does not change the hand of God upon our lives or his will for our lives. And we also know, as we spoke about in a previous podcast in Romans eight twenty eight, that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord, to them that is called according to his purpose. And we know that nothing happens in our life, no situation, no obstacle, no negative, no good, that hasn't first been sifted through the nail-scarred hands of a God that loved us enough to give his life for us. Absolutely. We can trust him. Yeah, in John sixteen thirty three, we read, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. I love that. Peace comes from Jesus. In me ye might have peace. In the world, right, not in Jesus, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Right? The world is not going to give us peace. That's not the prerogative of the world. That's not the prerogative of the devil who's the you know, prince and the power of, of the air. That, you know, that's not his prerogative. But it is Jesus. And Jesus, is, Jesus has overcome the world. And so since that, the world didn't give it to you, the world can't take it away. Right, right. And he gave it to us. So in him, we might have peace, regardless of the tribulation, regardless of what's going on in the world. Because the world didn't give it to you, so the world can't take it away. So your circumstances cannot dictate the joy and the peace that you have in Jesus. I love that he says in John chapter 14, 27, John chapter 14, Seriously, maybe one of my very favorite chapters in all of Scripture. But in 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He gives us peace. And as we're unwrapping this gift of of peace, we have a choice, Erica. We can set that gift that he gives us and put it on a shelf and let the world and the devil and trouble and tribulation, all these things cloud our minds as we put our focus on that instead of on God. Or we can hear what he says and not let our heart be troubled because we have a faith. We are justified by this faith, which we have peace in God. And he gives us peace. He left us peace. He left us the Holy Spirit to dwell within us, to teach us, to guide us, to comfort us, to, to let us know how to walk, to, to be able to help us understand the scriptures as we read them and how we can apply them to our life. He left nothing to chance or undone, but he completely saved us and completely thought through how we could li- live a life that is pleasing to him because he enables us through the presence of the Holy Spirit and his word that he leaves with us. I love that idea. I love that we carry the Holy Spirit with us at all times. The Holy Spirit, so God's presence is with us at all times. So there is always peace in us and with us. But the reality is we are human and we do walk into situations, right? We can be going along just fine and then things happen. And at that point... That's one of those places where we have to make a choice. We have everything that we need in us to have peace, but we have to make sure that we are in Jesus at that moment, right? In John 16, 33, we read that in me, you might have peace. We have to make sure we are bringing the Jesus in us into the situation. And in Mark chapter 4, that's exactly what happened, right? The, the, the boys, as you say, right there on a boat, and a storm comes. Storms come, right? They're going to come. But when they went and they, you know, they woke Jesus because he had all the peace. He was calmly sleeping through the storm, right? It says, and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. The disciples knew, but they had to go. They knew they had to go get Jesus. Because Jesus in every situation is victory. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world because we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, which is the third part of the Trinity. You know how much I love the story in Mark chapter 4, the account. It definitely happened. It's not a story, but it's an account of what happened. 
And you can't help but see the power of God. There's a popular song that says, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey? He spoke, and the winds and the waves, they ceased. There was a great calm. And in the midst of the storm, he speaks. But I wonder how close we're living our life that we could hear him. You have been, unfortunately, through work, through a a, a hurricane. Literally. I remember, right. (laughs) I remember you telling me that the noise was deafening. And yet, when he speaks, if we hear him and respond to his words, there's a great calm. And how dumb are we when we won't even do what the winds and the waves who don't even have a soul do? They obeyed. And then suddenly there was a great calm. I believe in the midst of every storm, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of whether you created the storm or you're making the storm worse or what's happening, I believe he's speaking. And I want to be the girl who can hear him when he whispers. Because in the center of the hurricane, there's great calm. I want to be in the center of his will. Come what may around me. Let me know the peace of God. I think that being able to hear him in the storm requires our hearts to be tuned to him. And I think when you talked in the beginning of this program about how we had to make sure our relationship with Jesus was in check. Um, You know, our hearts have to be tuned. If we, you know, that to me, that makes me think of like tuning in a, you know, a radio, right. And turning that knob. If we never turn the knob, when it's time to actually go try and find something, we don't know how much we have to turn. Like, we don't know how sensitive, you know, how sometimes when you remember when the radios, you actually were, like, turning that little, that little, like, vertical line was moving, you know, across the frequencies, and you had to get it tuned just right to bring in the station that you wanted, showing my age here. But, um, you know, if you only did that once a year, like, to find the Christmas station, it would be hard to tune it in. But if you did that every day, because you listened every single day to the same station at the same time, you know, you would know how to get there. And storms are going to come in our lives, but the storms are not the time for us to learn how to hear him, how to be tuned in to his voice. We need to practice being tuned in every day so that when the storms come, it's not a challenge for us to hear him. And, you know, I think that's the thing. When you look at people that have lives transformed by Jesus, it's that they have learned how to really get tuned in to his presence in their life and his voice. It reminds me of Romans 8, 6. It says, for to be carnally minded is death. Mm-hmm. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And that's what you're talking about, where our focus, our energy, our efforts, our love, our heart, our mind, our whole being is focused on Jesus. Then and only then will we live in absolute true peace. And we have to change our minds. Right, that that verse that you read to be carnally minded versus to be spiritually minded, that's tuning, that's getting your knob tuned in to the right place. Erica, read in our hearing, if you would, please Philippians four, I believe it's five, six, and seven. Yep. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, 
shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. When you unwrap the gift of peace, that is the recipe right there. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. That is what we need to do. We need to be careful for nothing. But in prayer and, and, and thanksgiving, let a request be made known unto God. Proverbs says that when we trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not into our own understanding and acknowledge him, that he shall direct our paths. And it says, be not wise in thine own eyes. But we are to fear the Lord, fear the Lord and depart from evil. That's how we get peace. Oh, how the Lord loves you, and oh, how the Lord loves me. And I'm so grateful that I don't need to be careful for anything, but in prayer, the peace of God will surround me as I focus my life and my attention to him. Erica, as we complete our time together, I want to say thank you for spending this time as we're unwrapping the gift of Jesus and his peace that he gives. This time of year when we're thinking about Christmas, perhaps, Unwrap him to his fullest extent. And we'll leave you with these words. Romans 14, 19 says what, Erica? Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another. It is our prayer that you know Jesus personally and that the peace of God surrounds you, indwells you, leads you, and guides you. Remember that you are loved Jesus loves you. Thank you all for joining us today in this program of Woman at the Well Ministries. We pray that it has been a blessing to you, and we encourage you to reach out to us through our website or our Facebook page. You can find us at watwm.org and at facebook.com slash watwm where you will find devotions and many additional Bible resources to enhance your personal walk with God. Woman of the Well Ministries is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our Heavenly Father, and it is through your loving and generous support that our ministry continues to bless others. If you would like to partner with Woman of the Well Ministries, please visit our website at watwm.org. We would like to thank the gospel group Fudge Creek for letting us play their hit song, Happy Girl greatly appreciate your prayers. Know that we pray for our listeners. Remember that God loves you and you are loved. Friday evening and she's downtown. Everybody is wearing a frown. She stands out like sunshine on it. to have Happy girl.